I am just listening to the voice of Colonel John Powers in Mercury Control, who has just advised us that as of this moment, we can report to you live and direct from this vantage point at Cape Canaveral. That's pad 14. Mercury Atlas 6 is ready for launching. John Glenn is inside the spacecraft. The countdown at this moment is T minus 85 minutes. This was John Glenn earlier this morning at breakfast. They awakened him at 2.20. He shaved and showered, and for breakfast, we understand that he enjoyed such things as scrambled eggs, two of them, a filet, fruit juice, orange juice, toast, jelly, and postum. This was followed by a physical examination, and finally, he began to suit up in the pressure suit. This, perhaps, was to be the big morning. Before, he had gone through postponements patiently. He's been waiting, training here at Cape Canaveral, while all of us have been waiting patiently, we, the nation, standing by for this attempt to put the first American in orbit. And as you can see, Mr. Glenn this morning is in good condition, happy condition. A go condition is the way they describe the crew. This was the scene as he left Hangar S, an event that took place at 5.02 in the morning, Eastern Time, Cape Canaveral time, ready to go to the launch pad. Oh, here's Colonel John Powers now with an announcement. We are at T minus 82 minutes and counting at this time. Astronaut John Glenn is in the cockpit of the Friendship 7 spacecraft. As of this time, all systems in the Mercury Atlas 6 are in a go condition. Countdown is at T minus 10 minutes and counting. Mercury astronaut John Glenn is reporting all of the systems in the spacecraft are go. Our status report in the control center ind indicates all systems are go. This is Mercury Control at T-minus 9 minutes and 45 seconds. The Florida skies are brilliantly clear here this morning. The cloud cover that had given us some worry earlier has now blown by, and we seem to have, at the moment, uh, no problem of visibility, so I think we will see this launch for quite a long period of time. Now, from that point in, the sustainer engine, the third of the big engines, will continue to burn, pushing the spacecraft now towards space itself moving through the outer fringes of atmosphere and toward a final velocity of 17,500 miles an hour and an altitude of 100 to 150 miles. There will be a critical decision which we will hear about but not see, a decision that takes place at the end of powered flight at T plus five minutes. That's the decision of go or no go, injection into orbit. It's the point in flight at which the spacecraft separates from the big booster and on separation moves into a attitude such that retro rockets could fire and thereby stop the flight at that point. This is a critical moment for Mercury Control as all moments in this final stage of the countdown are, but this is where the final decision will come. Thereafter, the astronaut and his spacecraft, if the decision is go, if he's in the right trajectory, if he has the right altitude, the right speed, the right angle, if everything is fine, then he will truly be in orbit and we can then begin to worry about first reports from the spacecraft and how is the astronaut doing. T-minus one minute at Wingo, all systems checking out, everything remaining perfect, everything remaining in place. We are now inside the five minutes time zone as long as something doesn't break down in the final moments. Weather here, weather downrange, good. Everything okay all the way. What must be the thoughts of John Glenn at this moment? Certainly he must know that the fervent prayers and hopes of a nation are with him that most of the nation itself is sharing this experience at this moment as best we earthbound human beings can do. T minus four minutes, a shift in count coming up on our clocks. T minus four minutes, and the countdown continues, moving toward a moment of zero, a moment of ignition, a moment when we will see the three large engines of the Atlas booster fire up with a thrust, the equivalent of seven million horses. 360,000 pounds of thrust, pushing a total weight off the surface of the Earth of some 200,000 pounds. Of that 200,000 pounds, 4,200 are the most important. So that represents the weight of a spacecraft with a man on board, a 168-pound astronaut, and all of that equipment ready to take him into space. And all the rest of the equipment worldwide waiting, standing by to catch his signals, record what happens to him, run documentation on the various experiments we hope he will perform and see what is the real story with a man in space so that he can lead the way for other Americans and other human beings to move on to the planets and perhaps one day to the stars. 
This is the very first orbital attempt by the United States. It will be followed by many more. Some 60 days from now, astronaut Donald K. Slayton, standing by at this moment, observing, watching, will be taking a mission very similar to this one, a tri-orbital mission. And perhaps near the end of this year, an 18 orbital mission is next on the list, to be followed next year by two-man teams who will fly as long as seven to 14 days. But today, this day, this flight marks the beginning of our orbital space attempt. This is Mercury attempt. Control. The MA6 launch countdown is at two minutes and 30 seconds and counting. Two minutes, two minutes, and, 30 minutes and 30 seconds. Two minutes and 30 seconds and counting. This is Mercury Control. The moment near. This is Mercury Control. The MA6 launch countdown is T-minus one minute and counting. T-minus one minute and counting. All systems are reported in a go condition. John Glenn reports he is ready. This is Mercury Control. If he's ready, so are we. We'll stand by, even as you, watching the picture, seeing what transpires. There's no need for further words or description here. This event will tell its own story. The story of the U.S. attempt to put American John Glenn in orbit. This is Mercury Control, the MA6 count, T minus 30 and counting. T minus 30 seconds and counting. John Powers reporting to us from Mercury Control. The Mercury spacecraft umbilical is out. We're at T minus 19 seconds. The cords, in other words, that connect it to the ground are released. It's on its own internal power now. T minus 10 seconds counting. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, lift off. The MA6 vehicle has lifted off. The MA6 vehicle has lifted off. Trajectory looks good. Three big engines burning clean and hot, pushing the Friendship 7 spacecraft ever faster toward space. Moving toward altitude 100 miles and speed 17,500 miles an hour for a planned space flight that will take Colonel John Glenn around the world in 90 minutes. Trajectory AOK -OK reports Mercury Control. History perhaps being written at this moment here at Cape Canaveral as Project Mer Mercury reaches a climax with its launching operation. And now one minute out, about 10 miles high, speed beginning to pick up into the thousands of miles an hour range and contrails beginning to show on the sky. nicely, has passed through the area of maximum dynamic pressures. Pilot John Glenn is reporting all systems go, is giving routine reports, reading off his instruments. Watch now for the outboard engines to cut off. Part John of the plan reports the flight very smooth now. On your screen, you should see what looks like a small explosion. It will be as explosive bolts will release booster engines, cutting them loose. The MA-6 launch vehicle is proceeding on its pre-planned trajectory. John Glenn reports his cabin pressure now holding at 6.1 pounds per square inch. Two minutes. Booster burnout will take place at two minutes and 15 seconds, and we should have a The MA-6 vehicle is still climbing on its trajectory. John Glenn reports the G-forces building now to 
uh, six. Booster engine cutoff has been confirmed by the pilot. Booster engine cutoff and now we're looking for a in tower. the Mercury Control Center have confirmed booster engine staging. The pilot has confirmed booster engine st staging. The pilot reports that the escape tower has separated. Our telemetry in the Mercury Control Center confirms that the tower has separated. This time we have lost visibility here at Cape Canaveral, but John Power is keeping us advised. For now, Colonel Glenn is truly on his way. The MA6 vehicle is now climbing on its trajectory. Three minutes and five seconds of flight time. It is flying on its pre-planned trajectory. The pilot reports that the G-forces are building up once again under the acceleration of the sustainer engine. Bermuda reports that it has acquired telemetry signals from the spacecraft. John Glenn reports her. Moving out now to the outer fringes of atmosphere, John Glenn, soon to be very much alone. In space, he will know a loneliness we Earth-bound human beings can only guess at. Radio contact, however, with his fellow astronauts and the tracking station will be his contact. He's pulling eight times the force of, of gravity. The forces of acceleration pushing him with a force above that of gravity eight times. The always vehicle is climbing nicely on its trajectory. Glenn reports his fuel system as planned. His oxygen system is all okay. He reports his electrical power all okay. Very soon now, from weighing... The Bermuda Station a valid track on the MA6 vehicle. Everything going well, according to Colonel Powers and Mercury Control. Going extremely well. And very soon now, we may have... John Glenn reports his cabin pressure holding at 5.8 pounds per square inch. Like a good test pilot, Glenn reporting back his condition. Telling us what's going on inside the spacecraft. The word being relayed from Mercury Control to you. John Glenn reports all systems are go. The MA-6 vehicle is approaching its sustainer engine cutoff point. John reports all systems in the spacecraft are go. The flight trajectory still looks good. It looks like a good launch all the way. We'll wait for sustainer burnout announcement. We have a report from the Mercury spacecraft that the sustainer engine has cut off as planned. The big engines have now done their job. John Glenn reports zero G and I feel fine. He says the view is tremendous. Direct reports from astronaut Glenn now coming up on the critical final phase of the powered flight portion. Glenn reports he could see the booster turning around behind him. He advised that he thought the sight of the booster falling away behind him was a beautiful sight to see. His spacecraft in position where this mission, should anything be even slightly wrong, could still be aborted, but everything looks perfect. In just a moment or two now, we can expect the John actual... John Glenn reports he can see a very large cloud pattern clear back toward Cape Canaveral and says it's a beautiful sight. Especially to have behind him, since that could have given us so much trouble but did not here at the Cape this morning. Astronaut John Glenn now reports his spacecraft has turned around. The blunt heat shield is facing the direction of flight and is tilted up about 34 degrees above horizontal. This is the desired pre-planned orbital attitude. All indications here are that we will have, we will be able to confirm orbit within a matter of a couple of minutes. This is Mercury Control. The critical phase passed. Flight Director Chris Kraft observing every facet of this operation. The spacecraft now passing beyond the first major time of decision. <laughs>